Hey everyone, welcome to my tutorial on Loopy Pro. Today I'm going to show you how to set up presets in Loopy Pro. Now if you're an instrumentalist, a guitar player, and you have something like an Axe FX or a Helix or you know HX version, uh, or even a pedal board with a switcher, you know uh, you want to press a button, uh, a foot switch button typically, and then it will turn on a certain set of effects for you and turn all the other ones off. And then press a different button and turn on another set of effects and, and their settings and turn everything else off. So that's what I'm using uh, as my definition of preset. And it's pretty easy to do in Loopy Pro compared to <clears throat> some other DAW software that runs on the iPad. So uh, there's three easy steps. Let's get, hey, oh, actually, there's two housekeeping things I want to talk about real quick. Uh, the first one is I'm making this video in, uh, at the end of December in 2023. So the, the fine folks at Loopy are always updating their software with new features and things. So uh, your, your software may not look like uh, mine does uh, if you're watching this uh, you know, too much later than that. Uh, and it may be the same, but it may not. And then the, the, the second item is your audio interface uh, should have already been set up or should be set up uh, coming from uh, your, de your device into your iPad uh, so that you have an audio channel uh, for your interface. And I'll show you what that looks like. If you are just starting into this and you're thinking, well, let me try this out first before I go purchase stuff and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, there may be some issues later on. You can't, uh, as of December 2023, you can't copy certain things over from one audio channel to another. I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, but that's it, those two things. So, hey, let's jump into the three easy steps uh, and, and, and let's do it. Okay, welcome back. So there are three simple steps in creating presets in Loopy Pro. The first step is to add audio buses for each preset. Uh, in my terminology, an audio bus is synonymous with a preset here. Uh, then we want to add sends, uh, what Loopy calls sends, what I call audio routers, uh, on the incoming instrument channel, on the audio channel coming in, bringing your guitar signal or instrument in. We want to add a send for each of those um, audio buses or presets, and we'll show you this. And then finally, we won't need to automate that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new project with a default template. And uh, to add, step one is add the audio buses. So to do that on the bottom right hand corner, we click plus and a list of options appear that uh, we can add stuff and we're going to pick add bus, which means add audio bus. So when I click on that button or when I click on the add bus, uh, from the list, I get a new audio bus, and Loopy by default names these audio buses a, a sequential letter. So the first one you add will be A, the second one will be B, C, D, and so on. <clears throat> so I want to add an audio bus for each preset, okay? Those will be synonymous, right? So I click that plus button on the bottom right again, add bus. Now I have another audio bus or another preset. So I did this four or five times, <clears throat> and there it is. I have five A, B, C, D, E, five audio buses, or five presets. So I'm, I'm basically done for step one. Now, I wanna make a comment here that should be obvious, and that is that each audio bus or each preset will have a unique set of effects for the sound you want that preset uh, to give you, right? Here's a picture of my finished, uh, you know, another project, and you can see each of these audio buses have a unique set of effects. <clears throat> I will not demonstrate that in uh, this video. Obviously, I don't know what your presets, you know, I don't know whether you want a you know, distortion or reverb or whatever, and you might not like the ones I like. So, uh, so you have to put those effects in. There's a pre-fader and post-fader effects. That's not the topic of this video, but we just wanted to add five audio buses, which represent five presets. Okay. That's great. Now let's move on to uh, number two.
To add the sends, we need to add a send for each audio bus. In other words, we need to be able to route the audio coming in from our audio interface to either audio bus A or preset A or preset B or preset C and so on. So in that audio channel where the sends come in, there's a plus sign along the row that says sends. Um, and so we click that plus sign. And when we do, when we click that plus sign, we'll see hey, you're going to add a send or, or router, and where do you want to direct that audio signal to? And then your list of audio buses comes, uh, comes up, right? And at the bottom there's something that says, you know, make a new bus on the fly. So I'm going to pick bus A, and now I have the ability, you can see the, the little audio send, or that looks like a little volume knob, right? And now I have the ability to send or to route audio as it comes in to audio bus A. Um, and then I'm going to click the plus sign next to that and add another send for bus B. I'm going to click the plus sign, add another send for plus C. Click the plus sign. And so <clears throat> when I'm finished here, I have a, a send or a router to be able to route that incoming audio signal from my instrument, from my guitar, to, to any or to all or whatever, uh, whichever I want, whichever of the audio buses or whichever of the presets uh, that I want. Okay, so that's step two, done. Piece of cake. Okay, now step three, which is the automation step. And it's certainly the most difficult step. Uh, we added an audio bus for each preset. We put a send on the incoming audio channel so that we could route or send the incoming audio to each of the presets. And now we need to automate that process. Again, the goal in the end is we press a button or turn a switch or press a foot switch on our MIDI controller and it will change presets for us. So we're gonna begin with the end in mind. I've got on my screen here, I've got uh, a, one that I had put together, a project that I had put together that will show this, right? And so we see on the right side, the audio buses or the presets, and then on my instrument channel, my incoming audio channel, I can see the five sends, A, B, C, D, E. And I've added a switch, uh, it says presets, it's in, it's in purple up at the top, and I can use buttons as well, and we'll talk about that uh, at the end of this part of the video, but um, I created a, a switch, and it has five positions. Uh, it has a position or a stop on the turn of the knob, if you will, for each of my presets, right? And what I want you to see, the goal of, of the automation here, is that uh, right now it's, it's set to clean. So what that means is on my sends that are on my instrument channel, I have A, the A send, the, the audio bus A send, turned up to 100%, send all the audio signal to A, and then all of the others, B, C, D, E, are set to zero and send none of the audio signal to B, C, or D, or E, okay? So when I move this switch, I moved it uh, to the second position, or the second item that the switch has, which I labeled ambient. Yours are gonna be labeled different because you have different presets. But I moved it to the second item or second position uh, that the switch has, and you can see my sends have changed. Now, audio bus B is receiving 100% of the single signal, audio signal, and then A, C, D, and E are receiving 0%. And when I move it up to uh, position C, or item number 3, and on this switch, uh, audio, uh, audio bus C is going to receive 100% of the signal, and A, B, D, and E will receive 0%. So this is the goal. This is what we're doing with the automation. We're, um, as, as we 
add some actions. Loop E in the, in the interface part, you can add actions. And we're going to set these actions so that when I hit a different item or a different position on the switch, I'm telling Loopy, hey, I want you to set these sends. I want you to set the sends on the incoming audio channel such that, you know, A, B, or C gets 100% of the signal, and then the uh, all of the others get zero uh, of the audio signal. So just that preset will be active. That's the goal here in step number three. So let's build this kind of switch in a new project, and then we'll see how it works. So here we are in step three. We're automating the process of controlling the sends so that we can route or send all of the audio signal to one specific preset and turn off the audio signal for the other presets or the other audio buses, okay? So I'm going to go into edit mode. In the bottom left, there's a pencil, and that takes us into edit mode. And I have re already removed some of the extra uh, loop clips that I don't need because I need space for my, um, my switch widget. So on the bottom are all the widgets. They call them widgets or, or interface controls that you can have. And I'm going to pick a, uh, a switch. Um, we can do this with buttons, you know, five different buttons or whatever, but I'm going to pick a switch. And when I click on it, I can rename it. Uh, whatever I want, and I'm going to call it presets because that's what it's controlling. And I'm going to give it a color, and why not do purple? And when we add a switch widget to our interface, we're going to see a list of items. It calls items. And we're going to want five items because we have five presets or five audio buses, right? So you can get rid of these extra items by holding it down, the item down, and then sliding it uh, to the left, and you will see a delete button appear. You don't see it um, in the list of items, but if you hold an item down and then slide it to the left, you'll see that. So hold it down, slide it to the left. Now I have <clears throat> um, five items, uh, which will be my you know five audio buses or five presets. Now I'm going to give them meaningful names uh, again, my presets are too different from yours, so you have to name them what, what you're going to have each of your presets do, or what makes sense to you. Um, they're just item one, two, three, four, five. But you click on the pencil next to the word item, and I'm going to say the first one is clean. The second one I'm going to call ambient, if I can spell. Uh, I'll call the third one grunge. I'll call the fourth one shimmer, and I'll call the fifth one um, chorus. Right. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm just giving them names for this. <clears throat> so now we have uh, five positions or five items in our switch, <clears throat> and we want to uh, automate this. We want to create a an action so that when I select one of these items, uh, it will and there will be five things that happens, right? It will say, <clears throat> uh, turn this audio bus to 100% and then turn these other four audio buses to zero. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to click the plus sign next to clean. And when I click that plus sign, I um, it, it says what, what action or what user action will initiate what you want to happen. Here I'm going to pick select. Right When I select clean, <clears throat> when I turn the switch or select that position, I want something to happen. Now, here's the actions, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to look for audio source actions, because that input channel is an audio source, <clears throat> and we want to adjust one of the parameters in that audio source. Specifically, <clears throat> we're adjusting the five sends, right? Uh, and we got to do this one send at a time, or one audio bus at a time, right? So I'm adding an action when I select this uh, position on the switch, and I'm adding an audio source action, 
and I'm going to click adjust the parameter. Now, it wants to know what the target is, okay? Uh, because there are two inputs. Uh, there are two audio source inputs. There's the microphone input from my iPad, <clears throat> which is there. I could get rid of it, I guess, but it's there. But also, there's the instrument input from my audio interface, right? Of course, so I'm going to pick that instrument one because that's where my sends or my routers are at. The parameter then, uh, there's a number of parameters that I can adjust. <clears throat> it's the gain, the balance, or here are my five sends. You can see they appear in the list, send A, send B, send D, <clears throat> and so on. So I'm going to pick send A last. By convention, what I do is I set or automate and turn all of the sends that I don't want on, turn them to zero, and then the last send in the list for my automation will be the one I want to be 100%. <clears throat> so this is my clean uh, preset, which I'm going to run on audio bus A. So I'm going to start with E. I picked uh, the parameter is my send to audio bus E. And the value, I want to assign it a value. And on the bottom, you can see the slider. And I want that value to be zero. Uh, ramp up means, you know, it will happen over time. If you want, uh, for this, this would be for like swells or maybe trails or some things like that, uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. But for now, I'm setting it uh, there. I don't want to ramp. <clears throat> when this action happens, when I select that item or that position in this switch, what I'm telling uh, Loopy to do here is on that instrument channel, I want to take the send or the route of the signal to, to audio bus E, and I want it to go to zero. Okay. So that's done, I'll hit back. And now you can see under the clean uh, item or under the clean position on this switch, uh, I have one action set up, right? Now, again, I need to repeat this action because I want the send to go to audio bus D to zero, the send to audio bus C to zero, the send to audio bus B to zero, and I want the send to audio bus A, which is my clean preset, I want that to 100. So there's a lot to set up here in this third step, which is why um, I told you it's the most complicated. <clears throat> but what I can do is I can duplicate this. When I click and hold on that action that I just created, I can copy it to clipboard or duplicate it, and I'm going to duplicate it. In fact, I'm going to duplicate it four more times so that I have a total of five of these, right? And right now they all say the exact same thing, or they're going to do the exact same action because I've duplicated it. But I'm going to take the second one down, and what I'm going to do is change the parameter and say, well, for uh, for the send to audio bus D, make that go to zero. And the third one down, I'm going to say, for the send to audio bus C, make that zero. And for the send to audio bus B, make that zero. And then on the very bottom one, the last one, which is which is the preset I want to activate or enable, I'm going to say for the send to audio bus A, I want that value to be 100%. Okay? So now the first uh, position or the first item in this, in this uh, selection switch or the first position in the selection, selection switch has all the actions we need. When I select this, I'm going to turn the send down to all of the audio buses except for A. I want A 100% and everything else off. Okay? So I need to do this same process for all the other positions or all the other items in the list that I've created. And I'm going to fast forward here so that um, you don't have to see me do that. And then we'll catch up at the end here, okay? Okay, 
Well, okay. So I'm back and I've edited my uh, widget, my switch widget. And for each item on the switch, I have five items for five audio buses or presets. And for each of these items, I have five actions. I'm turning the send to certain audio buses down to zero. And for the one audio bus that I want that's that particular item or that position in the switch to turn on, I'm setting the send, the audio signal to 100%, right? So we'll look through these and you can see uh, for my clean, I've got five. And if I look at the last one, A is going to audio bus A send, we'll get 100%. And I'll scroll down a little bit. Here's my grunge. And that is, grunge is going to be um, <clears throat> my audio bus C. So I have E set to zero, uh, the send for audio bus D set to zero, the send for audio bus B set to zero, the send for audio bus A set to zero, and because this is position for C, then the audio bus, uh, the send to audio bus C for, for the third position will be 100%, okay? So I'm gonna save this real quick, and then we're gonna try it out and we should see. So if I click on the pencil again, we are in, uh, not in edit mode, but we're like in live mode, right? And I'm going to hit this little mixer button on the bottom left. And now we can see my instrument, uh, my switch, which I can test out. And when I move that switch, these sends or these audio routers sh should change based on whichever position I move it to, right? So I'm gonna move it to the second position, and you can see the name of the second position is ambient, so that would be audio bus B. And lo and behold, look, if I look at the sends, 100% of the signal is going to audio bus B, and all of the other audio buses are getting zero. If I move it to the third position, which I call grunge, um, Audio bus C is getting 100% of the signal, and all the other audio buses are getting zero. I move it on to, to what I call shimmer, whatever. Audio bus D is going to get 100%, and everything else gets zero. And then finally, E uh, gets 100% uh, all the way up the last one, and then all the other audio bus signals will be zero. And I move it back to the starting point, which was uh, what I call clean and audio bus A gets 100% and the rest get zero. <clears throat> so this is our, uh, our switch or, or our widget uh, that will allow us, you know, kind of with the click of a button, so to speak, to change presets and turn all the other presets off and just keep the one preset on that we want, okay? Now, we could do this with, obviously, I did it, did it with a switch because you can see everything in one place, but I could have done this with a button. You can go in and add a button, and when you, uh, you know, you could call the button, um, you know, whatever preset you want, and then when you press the button, you have a list of actions, right? When I press this button, I can go through the actions. It's the same thing. We would go to the audio source action, adjust parameter. We would pick the, uh, the inbound instrument audio channel and the parameter we would want to adjust is you know ascend right and the value would be and then we would repeat that duplicate that um, and we would make five different buttons or whatever right so <clears throat> we can do that with a switch or with a button and so that's basically it uh, I'll touch real quickly on the uh, which is important for many of you right the last part being the um, the connection to your MIDI controller, right? Because I'm guessing most of you, uh, like myself, when you're playing your instrument, you have two hands and, you know, uh, you don't really, ca can't tell everyone, stop the song, let me, you know, let me um, stop the song and let me flip a switch on my iPad so we can go to the next preset, right? You want this stuff to be activated by, by MIDI. So when you go to edit mode, um, 
what you do is, and this is bonus, by the way, for the tutorial. <clears throat> when in your edit mode, um, as of December, end of the year 2023, right? There is a uh, like a ribbon button on the bottom with certain extra controls, and one of them on the bottom right is MIDI, right? And when you press that MIDI button, then you're opening up Loopy to listen to respond to MIDI messages, right? So I'm going to tap on this switch, and you can see when I tapped on the switch in, in MIDI learn mode, it's waiting for me to press my MIDI uh, switch. And when I press it, and I just did, um, it says, hey, I, I received um, from this MIDI controller called Morningstar MC6, which you, you already have to have set up, of course. Um, and then I received a, um, on channel seven, I received a program change message four, right? Now there's two things you can do. Uh, you can tap in and it'll has a MIDI learn function. Again, it's a, not the subject of this tutorial, but if you press down on that, uh, where it says, you know, waiting for MIDI signal, there's a small interface here that you can go in and, and manually set what MIDI message you want to control this switch. And what I did with mine, and I'll open up, um, open up another project here. Um, what I did with mine was I used uh, a nudge. I used a nudge control. Here's my um, here's my presets. Um, make sure I'm in edit mode. Here's my presets here. And when I go to MIDI and I click on that, um, I have um, the action I'm using is scroll. When I when I send this MIDI message, I want it to scroll, and then the adjustment. How, you know, you can set how much you want it to scroll. I want it to scroll, you know, three clicks, three positions, or three items, or two items. But I'm just doing a nudge value, and I'm nudging it by one. So you can see what that looks like. So I have on my MIDI controller, if I uh, single press this foot switch, it will nudge this preset up one position or one item. If I double click, it will nudge it down one item, right? So uh, let me go back out of, uh, whoops, let me close that and go back into um, live mode. So again, um, whoops, there we go. So I just clicked on my foot controller, on my MIDI controller, and it went up, and I click on it and it goes up, and then if I double click, it goes back down. So you can tie your MIDI controller, which is really what you want to do, into this switch. And that's a general recommendation that I have uh, for all of my, uh, for all of the controls and things that I do. I, I, I make everything with a widget or, you know, an interface control, and then I tie the MIDI uh, the MIDI actions into those um, just because I feel like I can kind of test them out without connecting up my MIDI controller first uh, and I find that's a lot easier.